two and one. But speak thou the things which become its sound doctrine, that the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior, as become it holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed, chaste conversation. Shalom, sisters. Hope everyone's doing well. <laughs> um, so tonight, we're just going to have a quick conversation over the book of Judges, book six and seven. Um, when I was reading Judges books, um, reading Judges, the scripture stood out. Judges five, it's a lot. Judges seven, five through six. And so I'm going to read that real quick. It says, those who lapped with their tongue like dogs were not chosen, but those who scooped the water in their hands and brought it to their mouths were. We have to be humble in this truth and we have to have faith. Um, and at some point in this walk, we're going to have to let go of those who don't follow this truth. And we have to trust that y'all will provide the right people to walk this walk with us. What we're just going to go over quickly, this won't, I won't be keeping everyone long, is just four main points from the book of Judges 6 and 7 that I've found. Um, and it centers around Gideon. So everyone's familiar with Gideon? So yeah. Gideon, so Gideon was, um, well, let's just go to Judges 6. Okay. Let's go to Judges 6 and 12, and we can start there. Okay. So just read 11 through um, 13 so we can get an idea about Gideon. Okay, so Judges chapter 6, verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained, to, pertained unto Joash, the Abazrite. His son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites, verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor, 13. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told, of, told us of, saying, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord had forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Okay. So Gideon was a mighty man of valor. He was chosen um, by Yahweh to deliver um, Israel. So that was Gideon's purpose. Um, so the one thing that I want to bring out in today's um, in tonight's reading are just some attributes or some things that um, stand out about Gideon when it comes to, again, like I said, us being humble in the truth and having faith. Um, and so this first point is that you have to be humble. You have to be humble. Gideon, being a mighty man of valor, he was chosen you know, to save Israel. Um, and you'll learn that he felt he wasn't worthy to do this because of where he came from. So Gideon came from a poor family and he was leased in his father's house. Um, and so when you read um, Judges 15, wait, Judges 6 and 15, that's where he'll tell, you know, it tells us that he was poor and leased in his father's house. Um, but we'll find out that Yahweh, he doesn't care about our position, riches, and our titles. He'll use who he sees fit. He prefers to use the humble. So if you can bring out 1 Peter 5 and 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he, might, that he may exalt you in due time. 
Uh, okay. So um, if we can read in Judges 6, it's just going to be three verses. So we're going to kind of skip, but 17, 37, and 39. Judges chapter 6, verse 17 says, and he said, and he said unto him, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. So here he's asking for a sign. So let's go to 37, because again, now we're talking about having faith. Verse 37 in Judges chapter 6. Behold, I will put a fleece of wool on the floor, and if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. Right. So now he's again asking for another sign, right? If you um, do this, then I'll know. I'll be sure it's me that you're calling. And then 39. Verse 39 in Judges chapter 6. And Gideon said unto God, let not thine anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece, let it now be dry only upon the fleece and upon the ground, let there be dew. Uh, so Gideon, he seemed to lack faith, right? Um, and didn't take Yah at his word when he was said he was chosen to save Israel. So what he was doing was he was asking Yah for a sign. He asked him three times as we just read, a sign, you know, prove to me that I am, you know, the one who's actually chosen. Um, it always seemed like, you know, he was trying to get out of saving Israel in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, he seemed to be fearful, um, lacked his, you know, faith and confidence to complete the task that was given to him. Um, but what we have to do is learn to give, you know, y'all the praise and be patient because he's patient with us, right? And long suffering despite our stubbornness. Um, and so when we read Deuteronomy 31 and 6, it tells us, you know, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he do it, he um goes with us, you know, and he will not fail us or forsake us. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if you can read for me um Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, so we have to have faith in whatever Yahweh has for us um, and know that he will see us through it. He will see us through it. Um, something else that Gideon teaches us is um, forsaking others, right? Sometimes we have to forsake others um, in this walk. So um, Gideon was tested before he went into battle for Israel by Yah. Um, it, he had him throw down by um ball ba, balls I can't Baal. speak Baal's mm -hmm. altar right and then build up an altar to Yah um and so let's read why that's um why that stands out in Judges six twenty five and twenty six and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him take thy father's young bullock even the second bullock of seven years old and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father had, and cut down the grove that is by it, and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock in the ordered place, and take the second bullock, and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove, which thou shalt cut down. Uh, so here what he's doing is, because his father worshiped, that he's he's setting him apart right from his family he's saying serving me this is what you're gonna have to do you have to cut down that altar and build one for me right so when y'all wants to use us we want to make we rest we can rest assured that we will have to make room for him we're gonna have to make room for him and um the way we can make room for y'all is you know getting rid of sin getting rid of those distractions um getting rid of all kind of waste and just make room for righteousness to come in. Uh, Gideon, we learned, was obedient. He was obedient to Yah. 
Um, but he was wise also. He was wise also. He did what was asked of him. But what he did was he waited until it was dark to do so because, again, he didn't want any issues with his father. Um, Judges 6.27 says that Gideon took 10 men and did as the Lord said, but because he feared his father's house and the men, in the men of the city, he could not do it by day, so he did it by night. So he still was able to, you know, do what it was that y'all had required of him. Um, Gideon, he was also faced with facts that, you know, he had to do this against his father or his household, um, and he feared his father, right? Um, and then after he did destroy that, um, the altar of Baal, ba Baal, how am I saying that, y'all? Baal, <laughs> that the people of the city actually wanted to, um, to kill him for it. You know, they wanted to kill him for it. And so what we'll have to realize is like the steps that we take in this walk, it'll cause our own families to, to talk bad about us, you know, but we have to be reminded who our families are in this truth. Um, and so Matthew 12 and 50 is a good reminder of that. If you can read that for me. It says, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother, my sister and mother. And then if you can go over to Matthew 19 and 29. And everyone that forsaketh houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Uh, so just, I have one more point to make. Um, this was really short. But just a reminder, you know, in reading Judges 6 and 7, what we're learning from Gideon is, um, you know, being humble in the truth and having faith. And that at some point, we will have to let go of those who don't follow this truth. And we're going to have to trust that y'all will put the right people in our path to walk this walk with us. OK. All right. So we're going to talk about um, finally, like the quality support. Um, and I just want to make a point that we don't have to always broadcast what it is that y'all has planned for us. Um, sometimes we want to be able to move silently, right? Move silently and let him do his work in our lives. So when it comes to um, like the quality support or him placing people in our lives, you know, we often sometimes will assume like there's power in numbers, you know, in quantity over quality is the best, but that's not always the case. You don't need a large number of people backing you and supporting you to get the outcome, you know, that you're looking for. So when y'all uses you, you know, he doesn't need large num a large number of supporters to do that and make that happen for you. But what he does want is he wants to make sure that he gets the glory because everything he does, you know, he wants the glory for it. Um, and then you'll know how much support you'll require for that to be so. So whatever it is, whatever assignment he is that he gives you, whatever assignment it is that he'll give you, he'll make sure you have the right people there to get it done. Okay. Um, if you can bring out Psalms 29 and 2. Give unto the Lord the glory, do unto his name, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Um, so that's, you know, giving him the glory in all things. Now, if there's too many people who are involved, um, we can get prideful, right? Um, and at some point, it'll feel like that, um, you know, people are, whatever's happening or going on is because you made it happen and not because y'all made it happen. And so, you know, we don't want <clears throat> a lot of that to happen. Um, an example in Judges is, um, Judges, let's read Judges 7 and 2. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midian, Midianites into their hands. Least Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying mine own hand had saved me. Con, con. So that's just showing, you know, um, when you have a large group of people, you know how we were talking about quantity over quality or assuming that mm -hmm. the power is in the number of people, that's not always so. You can get prideful and think, oh, I'm the one who's making this happen when all along it's 
really Yahoo is doing it for you, you know? Um, so he'll place those who are meant to like assist you in your path. Um, Gideon himself, he was given a large army, but the army was definitely tested before they were chosen to be able to help him. Um, and so in the beginning, I read the scripture, Judges 7, 5, and 6, where it was saying that um, those who lapped with their tongue like dogs were not chosen, but those who scooped the water in their hands and brought it to their mouth were. Um, and so that just reminds me, you know, the scripture, Proverbs 19 and 24, where it tells you, a slothful man hided his hand in his bosom and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again, you know? And so um, when we're talking about quality support, it's like, who would you want on your side? What two, you know, which of those two um, type of people would you want on your side? Definitely not someone slothful. Yes, sis? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I knew you had read this a while ago, but if you could break down, I hopefully I'm not the only one that need a little bit of a breakdown. When you read Judges 7, 5, and 6, what what is that really saying? Um, one that lapped the water with his tongue, as a dog that lapped him, shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. Yeah, and in the number of them that lapped in their houses. Okay. Yeah, and the number yes. of them that lapped, put in their hand to their mouth, worth. Yeah. So what is what is that really saying? What what is that saying? Anybody? Yeah, con. To me, it was like, um, well, when you read the first part, right? So the people are, what does it say? Everyone that lappeth with his tongue as a dog, right? Yeah. So you're just in the water. You're being lazy and quick, right? And you're just like licking the water up with your tongue. You're not taking the time to cup it, bring it to your, like, there's no um, like steps, action, no thought to it. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's how I see it in my mind. I don't know if anyone else sees yeah. it that way, but imagine going to the river. You got two types of people. You got the ones who literally just are licking, you know, lapping the water up um, quickly, leaning over into the, to the river, face getting wet and messy. You have those type of people. And then you have the other ones who actually are bowing down there on their knees, they're cupping this water in their hands and they're drinking it, you know? So if you just imagine and picture that, yes, Sister Shia. I'm trying, I just, um, I remember reading the same thing and I remember um, a perspective explained was like, um, if you literally think of animal, an animal like a dog, they basically, they're focusing on their task. Amen. So if you're, if you're kneeling down or if you're mm -hmm. um, using your face mm -hmm. um, to say drink water, you're at you're at a you're on a battlefield or you're in an area where you're supposed to be prepared. So if you're putting if you're putting the water up to your hands and maybe you're knelt down or you're you're uh, squatting down, you're a little bit more on the ready. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Kind of are less likely to be overthrown um and, and your reaction time is a lot shorter so it was along the lines of know where you are know your surroundings but then also remember who you are because at this point you're not in you're not desperate to where you can it was like that part and then another perspective you're not you're not too desperate to lower down your standards or your laurels or your morals of like just doing anything at that time. Like remember who you are, like you're at war, you're battle, you're torn, you're waiting, you're waiting. You don't wanna let your guard down. Quality is better than quantity. And so like the sis was explaining, you want someone who's, I don't know why I'm thinking the word meticulous, but that's not the word, but someone who's mindful. Someone who's mindful supporting you um, as opposed to someone who's the word I keep thinking about is slothful, but not as visible. Yeah, I know. And I, I, now that you're saying that, it makes me think of um, kind of being frivolous with it. <clears throat> Sister Tiffany says, <laughs> Tiffany, unmute. <laughs> she said, uh, what, what she got out of it is that it represents those who would stay and those who should go. That's what I was getting to with like the wheat, the wheat and tears. 
but yeah and that's eventually what happened as well he decided not to um what is it when you read seven and seven and mm-hmm. yeah seven and seven mm. is when he actually tells them and the lord said unto gideon by the 300 men that left i will save you and deliver the midianites into thine hand and let all the other people go every man unto his place mm-hmm. so it was a way to select and choose so yeah their safety and numbers and the most high gonna move his pieces where he see fit you know mm-hmm. a lot of the time we think it's 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 numbers it's numbers but if we you know read throughout the book you know there's a lot of there's a lot of places where we read where he used small numbers one person to do a big job right like like i was talking about with noah uh it was eight people that build the ark eight people you know um Um, but and 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 so you and 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 he ended up he ended up being a what and uh the father of well not the father of many nations but start right starting over Mm -hmm. everything you know what i'm saying so so when we um in our walk and stuff and we thinking that we alone and a lot of us do think that we alone um and it can seem lonely at times but with with you with just you being in the place where he needs you to be you know you could cover a lot of ground <laughs> you know so i'm still looking at it like a chess piece because you know you look at you look at one piece like oh they could only do this and that but that was a power move this piece just made mm-hmm. you know in that in that type of sense so um what we have to to start to separate from from the ungodly things and from worldly things for the most high to be able to make power moves with us i'll praise it to the most high well with that being said same time (laughs) same place same time same place same same beauty time same place same duty Case made is our duty. Okay. Hey. Okay. Our presence in the most high. Until next time. Love y'all. Have a good night.